you know my story, I went from a 30 year old with no career, no money in the bank account to being a senior developer with multiple apps with many users for different companies, earning a six figures annual salary in just under five years. Today, we're gonna talk about the app that I learned the most from. And it was early in my career, maybe when after like three years I started programming. I'll give you a little backstory of what the app was about. So the story of the app was that I was working at a software development firm in sales and development. One of my clients was this mental health application. And so I set a meeting and long story short, I closed it and I made the company some money, right? And I programmed it too. Next, he invited me on to the team to be like the lead developer. And I was only three or four years into my programming career, so it was very hard. It was a big step up. We built the prototype at the uh, software firm and then now he needed a fully fledged working product. And basically, he decided to redesign the whole app and uh, gave us three months to do it. So it was, uh, it was a challenge. I got to build Building. We got the app done on time. Things were going great, but the CEO saw an opportunity where we would build apps for other NGOs. They really liked our app. I got to work and I started refactoring and rebuilding the entire app and separating all the features so I could turn on and off the features to kind of modularize the features to kind of make it work. Here, like some with chat, some without chat, some with video chat, some without video chat, some with journaling, some without journaling, and you get the point. So through building this app, there's something that clicked in my mind. Every app needs authentication, chat, profile management. These are like three very important things that almost every app does. And then it has some kind of secret sauce, like whether it be journaling or video chatting or quizzes or whatever it is. In the end, you're always gonna need authentication, profile management, most likely 90% of the time chat. Something clicked in my mind, just make those things really well and then you can kind of get to the good parts really easy and uh, have fun. And uh, so we built out an app and it had all the features. And I'll just show you the website here. Uh, called GitHub. Basically, we started out as a mental health company during COVID. There was this thing going around called the COVID Blues, and uh, he kind of like figured, you know, why don't we make a journaling app where we can, and we'll have like this video chatting with a doctor, and it would be good. But then we had about us like wellness workshop that was like the video chatting software services community, and then he added this B two B section. He wanted this B two B section to build out apps for other people. He wanted to be like this white label application company. So an all-in-one tech partner for mental health NGOs. So basically we built out all these features, I'll show you down here, uh, login, so like authentication, biorhythm tracking, online video chatting, uh, text chatting and chatbot, online journal, mood tracker, self-assessment test, and uh, GPS enabled search. And we kind of wanted to use that. Not every app is gonna need all these, right? They could just choose like five of these or three of these and then make a whole app out of it. There's a little video of the app. I'll just share my screen. We can look at the app together. This is the first app right here. It has like some scheduling, journaling, mood tracking and you can kind of see your weekly moods and the calendar and chatting and some kind of chat bot and profile management and a whole bunch of just stuff that every app is going to need it is in the app store i don't think you guys should download it though i don't work there anymore and with that app we did build another app for this company called napima and basically we use that app to build this app and it's in the app store so you see that it has a mood journal interactive dashboard and video chat and uh, prompting cues mood journal so it's a, basically the same app, just repackaged with different logos, different colors, and design. That's what I did, and I'll kind of show you how I did it. Basically, we went through the app, you know, so what language stack and how did I code it, right? We used uh, React Native Community CLI, and this was in like 2020, 2021, and it was around three years or three or four years into my uh, career. So when I first built the prototype at the software development firm I was talking about, we just used React Native, Node.js Express, and MySQL. That was it. But uh, this is how I did it the first time. But having to redo it in the three months with the new redesign, uh, I learned about Firebase and serverless architecture. So I learned Firebase, Firestore, Firebase Cloud Functions. And it was easy to use and fast to deploy. It was done in Node.js uh, with Lambda Functions and React Native. And a big thing, I'll show you guys the code. And the big thing I learned was how to bind the Firestore with Redux with this uh, library called React Redux Firebase. It was really good. It saved me a lot of time and I think it could add value to you guys. I don't know if people use it because people don't really use Redux recently. I had a good time and it made it very comfortable to use Redux. I just used this for the library. It, it loaded up all the things into my Firestore from Redux that I needed. I didn't need to keep making calls and uh, people always talk about kind of like the uh, price of making requests over and over again to Firestore, but you don't really need to do that if you have a global state management. There's like some code to initialize the app and the user profile because like you're not going to keep asking for the profile over and over again from Firestore because that's how you build up these requests. So you just stick that in your Redux and if there's any changes you update it in your Redux as it goes. So that's kind of what we did and I'll kind of show you guys the code. So this was the V1. 
and we're using Storybook. So we had a folder structure like, um, and it taught me like this code kind of like taught me a lot about organization and how to set up React Native project. You have like your navigation, you have your stacks, hooks, services where your API calls go. It was uh, it was very fun. It was um, interesting, and I had a big learning experience. Um, kind of working with uh, other developers trying to get this thing done. It was really good. This was the first version and I have something similar with like the boilerplate that I wrote to make like uh, the other apps like I just showed you with like Napima and everything else. I'll share the GitHub link with you guys. It isn't exactly the boilerplate that I created at the company because it's not my company, it's not mine. And But I used a lot of that influence to build my own kind of boilerplate like serverless, Firebase serverless architecture, like um, Firestore, boilerplate with React Native that I used on my project for a while. I'll go to github.com. I think it's called React Native Burner in mine. Here's like the folder structure. So I think, you know, a big thing about code and when I was tasked to kind of redo the app in a very, you know, lighter and turn things off, I learned about, you know, how to organize my readme, how to kind of like organize everything in the documentation so other people could help me. So I kind of wrote this documentation. You have the SRC folder. I have my uh, assets and then I'll, I would have my images, fonts, and then um, components and the components would hold like the index.tsx which would hold all of my code that I would import or export from there. And then if it had its own assets, I put it in there. If I had uh, something specific to the Android or specific to the iOS, I would keep in those folders. And then I had my config and then the config of my app, like app config, like uh, server URL, language, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it just showed me how to organize it. You guys can take a look. I'll share the link with you guys, how I structured this app. It's not how I do it anymore, but um, it, was, uh, it was a good one. I thought it was easy to use. So a big part of this, right, in the app config, when you go to SRC and you go to the config folder, in the app config, I put all the features, right? I put, there's a pay mode, there's a language of the app, and then there's a storybook. If I wanted the practice screen on or not, uh, if I wanted chat in the app or not, I could just pass true or false and it would take away the tab button on the bottom. Journal true or false, and then chat extras, did I want to be able to let them upload images or videos, uh, and I would just have to turn it true or false, and then the video, I'll have to remove that. If I wanted video chat in there, I would just pat true or false, and then I'd put some endpoints in here. This code helped me learn a lot, as in like, um, you could hide things, because on iOS and Android apps, you can't really look at the inspector or anything, so you could kind of just hide things and people can't really see it. So I have my kind of index.tsx in the navigators and I would, in the root, I have my index.tsx and then I kind of just uh, hid stuff. Like if the config.chat feature was on, then I, then I would show that this chat was in the app, right? If uh, the config.journal feature on, I would be able to kind of control, you know, if the tabs were shown in the app and kind of separate the logic so then it was like its own app within the app. It really uh, opened my eyes to kind of like how to code clean and all that kind of stuff. So I did use Firebase in this, right? So if you look at the package.json of the app, you'll see that I use a lot of libraries in React Native and uh, especially in the readme, I kind of put notes on how to install all the um, packages I was using. So a big thing was, I kept on looking about it, it's called React Redux Firebase, but maybe you know what React is, maybe you know what Redux is, but uh, Firebase is a big one, right? And it kind of ties it all in together, kind of um, make the app have its own um, backend as a service or like authentication. So Firebase is a huge, huge SDK, so software development kit built by Google for authentication for their NoSQL database, for push notifications, for a bunch of things in their, in their suite, let's say, right? So make your app uh, the best it can be with Firebase and Generative AI. This is just added because they uh, added some kind of thing called Gemini. But basically, they have a bunch of things like you can deploy apps on here. You can um, do some, a lot of things, right? Um, you can do, um, and it's used by a lot of big companies. So I'll just show you what it looks like in the console. So you've got a Firebase console. And basically, you can just turn on, um, I'll just go to this, React or the burner. Basically, it has a bunch of products like app check, app posting, authentication, and well, look, an end to end user identity solution under 10 lines of code. That's, you know, it's super powerful. You have Firestore. It's almost like Mongo, just no SQL. 
it helps you store data and you can kind of um, call the fire store directly from your app you have hosting you have functions like lambda functions and um, basically the only problem is it with it is uh, it can get quite expensive if you have thousands and thousands and thousands of requests you know it's not hard to get thousands and thousands of requests if each person is going moving here moving here moving here and you have like a thousand users and they're making a bunch of actions on your app but basically you have a firestore database that you can kind of um you can see the data you get a uid it's very much like mongo and you have like chat requests um chat rooms you can create your own collections and then you have basically um, authentication which you can have here and it stores uh, authentication so you don't have to store passwords and you know create your OAuth 2 uh, strategies and uh, it taught me a lot because reading through Google documentation Firebase documentation you kind of learn how software is supposed to be built you understand the patterns that need to happen within your um, app to kind of follow some kind of a uh, readable format and uh, you know it helped me a lot trying to like understand and piece together you know react native and firebase because there's a lot of documentation for it too it's not just like I built it it's not like uh, many people use this deck and so maybe you want to use something obscure or whatever but you're not gonna find as many uh, documentation but react native firebase uh, lambda functions you're gonna find many resources and it's gonna help you kind of um, figure that out as well so uh, that was really good for me because uh, you got to see uh, how to store data and I'll show you how you do that in the app right now. I'll just press a dot in here. I think that's a pretty cool feature. You can just press a period in the GitHub repository and it opens up the uh, Visual Studio Code in the browser. That's a new feature from like four years ago. Four years is not a new feature. but So basically you have like um, these screens, right? And you have like uh, so you maybe you'll have like a a request or a pending request screen, and you basically have these hooks called like use Firebase and use Firestore. And actually, I never used TypeScript before this project, so I learned how to use TypeScript during this project as well. So I had this um, component called Chat Request, and uh, I used TypeScript so it extended Firebase instant, extended Firestore instance. And you can kind of see uh, that it is a type from Re React Redux Firebase that gives you things like um, Firestore set, add, and get. And then from there, I would um, I would get I would say like add to this um, collection chat requests the uh, the empty request uh, of who it is, and it would be a, and then a status appending. And then you'd kind of see that like pending requests. The first thing I do is um, I use state, and then somewhere here I remember I say get all the pending requests from this person. And so here I think it is. So get Firestore ref run transaction. This was kind of like my counter transaction in case that something happened, and I would roll back the uh, transaction from the database. And um, you know it was. It was quite an eye-opening experience, kind of getting to work on my own, you know, and honestly, it's right when GitHub Copilot came out, so I was kind of playing around with that a lot, and it was like a really fun pair programming with uh, AI at the time, and I was learning a lot, and um, oh, here it was, get pending request. So here we are, I have my get method from Firestore, so I said get request from collection, um, chat requests and I had my fire names here in my constants my uh, so everything was like I was able to organize everything very interestingly and um, how other people could read it and uh, see right away and the reason why I put my uh, strings in here where um, I used to make a lot of typos when I type so if I have my variable names and auto completion it helped a lot and here was my uh, chat request so I said basically um, Request oh pending request sorry, I said get pending requests, uh, get requests a wait get on the collection chat requests where uh, the key participant uh, contains me and the key status equals pending so there is nobody uh, there is nobody that touched like the accept or deny button yet 
and then you get the requests pending so that are mine and then um yeah basically the code was done like in a very clean way as i thought at the time there's many different ways to do things but it was uh easy for me to read and easy for me to navigate through the code and um it was uh interesting for me i'm not going to show you much more code so this was something i learned a lot like how to modularize code how to separate things and how like actually like there's one big app but then there's small apps within that app that you can kind of uh, separate and kind of um, use everywhere so like I always say create your little treasure chest make things that you can keep reusing and reusing and reusing and uh, it'll make your career like in software development much easier yeah that was something that was good one of the most uh, important things right is I started and then I finished right so that meaning I got to start you know with there's nothing right well like I mean there are like libraries and packages but I have to kind of figure out how to do it and then um, I learned and then I finished what I said I was going to finish. And through that, I learned many things, right? I learned how to, um, um, you know, think about a problem, think about like the steps in order to like, yes, you can send a chat request, but then from there, what is going to happen? And then you kind of think about all the things, possibilities that are going to happen from there. So yeah, like a suggestion to the user or if you're you, you watching, you can actually um, write out your plan and then actually not just start it but finish what you say you're gonna start you know and you know I did make a lot of mistakes mistakes are gonna happen and um, don't be scared to like run like uh, get reset hard maybe not too much you know like if you kind of get too deep into like some kind of once you understand the basics of JavaScript once you get there you kind of make errors and think right and if you start digging a hole it's not like a reason of like not knowing the language or not knowing how to do it it's more like I was thinking wrong Let's roll it back and then let's uh, let's go a different way because I always think about coding kind of like this. Like uh, I see other people and they have like, let's say, I don't know, like a small little pen or a small little pickaxe, right? Uh, trying to pick away at the problem, pick away at the problem. And, you know, you'll get the problem done in a long time. But sometimes you need to go back into the toolbox and then just kind of get that sledgehammer and just break the wall down, right? And it's... Um, that's the kind of thinking you have to have because don't worry like if you have the pickaxe in the beginning that's the wrong choice in the beginning just uh, go back and make a better choice and uh, fix the problem and it doesn't matter if you were wrong as long as you fix it that's uh, that's like my best advice for you yeah so like that's it but uh you know like these are things you're gonna learn like uh, through projects and um, there's a free JavaScript course coming up that I'm going to uh, teach and I think some pe a lot of people signed up and I'm very excited for it and um, this is the uh, kind of uh, JavaScript course I kind of had it open on an accident I didn't mean to do it but uh, here we are you know it's gonna be for beginners for kind of experienced people we're gonna go through JavaScript HTML CSS react basics of react basics of Git, um, do some uh, HTTP requests handling look through big JSON objects let's look through arrays and make some kind of crud uh, create read update and delete and um, you'll understand like every single app is a crud to be honest and um, that meaning like like a Facebook post you post you create a post you can update a post you can delete a post you have to get the post later so that's something that I'm looking forward to it and see you guys there and uh, just remember if I can do it you can do it too coding saves lives